Welcome to Motorcycle Class. Thanks for showing up. You showed up to get learned, didn't you? All right. Today in Motorcycle Class, what in the heck are we doing? We're trying to find the unicorn. What is unicorn is a term for something that doesn't exist. A unicorn motorcycle would be the motorcycle that can do everything and can do everything perfectly. Of course, the motorcycle doesn't exist, but we can try. And based on these diagrams that I half-assed out of my butthole and fingertips 10 minutes ago, you're going to buy a motorcycle, whatever the motorcycle is in this example, it's a unicorn. First thing to factor and consider is, you know what, that's what this is for, is budget. How much are you willing to spend? The more you're willing to spend, the more quality you get. Typically though, when it comes to vehicles and most things, the more you spend, the better it gets at a curve about like this. So let's say for example, our budget is $15,000, which is here. We're gonna hit this, that's about 75%. Now the boundaries of these are determined by reality. Well, in this case, 100 is an objective finite measure, 30,000, there are motorcycles that cost more. So theoretically, we could drag this. This is technically better than this, but multiplicity-wise, not very much. Let's just keep the graph here. Let's say you have spending $15,000 you're gonna get about 75 points of quality. You're gonna get about three quarters up here versus if you spent double that 30,000, you might get something that's 85 points in quality, 85 out of 100% of the best motorcycle that there is. 100% and these boundaries are determined by what exists today. The best vehicle capabilities that exist. About $15,000, there are several motorcycles that exist. I'm not gonna name names specifically other than for examples, but if this is our budget, we have, oh man, maybe at least 10 different motorcycles that exist that we can choose from. And what we're gonna choose is a unicorn. We want a motorcycle that does everything well. We gotta make compromises because we're working with real motorcycles, not hypothetical ones. That's why we're not gonna solve for X. X is not a number, we're doing real math here. A unicorn on a quadrilateral chart, I don't know what this is called, but this is what my brain draws up. We need a vehicle that can do highway and off-road equally well. That pretty much puts us into adventure motorcycles. In the case of my unicorn, it has to be street legal. All motorcycles that I own, they have to be street legal. So let's just throw that stipulation on there. We're not gonna do a dirt bike that can go really fast. I don't know if these are right. I feel like power uh, engine size might be near somewhere, whatever. I'm just thinking this out loud. Hopefully you see what I'm getting at. And the unicorn would be right here. But there's our unicorn. We need a motorcycle that does everything really well. This is a mess, okay. Let's start back here. You got a motorcycle. That's 75 points. That's the best you can get. Now take your motorcycle and drop it into this video game over here. Okay, so you load up this bike and it has 75 stat points. There are 100 possible stat points in a motorcycle. Again, the 100 motorcycle does not exist. If you look over in that print distribution, there is no perfect motorcycle. That's why we have to make a decision with what we have to get as many points as we can that has them distributed among the stat chart, wherever they're best used for, whatever we're trying to buy. In this case, it's a unicorn. We want something that is like six points on all of them. We want equal measure. Now what these categories say, I just made up. It doesn't really matter what they are for the point of explaining. You have a hundred possible points to spend or realistically not even a hundred points, but how they're distributed determines the kind of bike you're getting. So if you want a sport bike that goes fast, we want high points, we want like 10 speed and handling and acceleration. Those are our most important categories. Again, this isn't in order, but you get the idea. So for Unicorn, have our budget, we have a selection of motorcycles. We pick the one that best fills out these stat points and a distribution that correlates with that kind of motorcycle, which is even. So for example, I've had a KLR 650, a lot of people have. That's probably a, that's probably a 50 point motorcycle. I mean, it's, it's really cheap. Normally for $75,000, $7,500, you get a motorcycle here in quality, which is about 25 points. However, that KLR was at least a 40 point motorcycle. We had at least that many points to spend based on how it performed, based on handling and speed off-road. That's why that vehicle motorcycle is a good buy. You get a good value. So the KLR 650 is known as jack of all trades, master of none. So we get 40, 50 points, whatever it is, and we spend it. It would be probably pretty evenly distributed. We'd have probably, you know, fours on all of these. Very briefly, a uh, unicorn motorcycle should do everything. Every motorcycle does everything. You can take a Yamaha R1 off-road. You could, it wouldn't have a very good stat point, but the point is to have a vehicle that does 
everything well. KLR 650, uh, not a horrible idea if you're trying to build a unicorn, but we have more money to spend. We'd buy a vehicle up here. Now I am gonna name some names. Because if you're realistically trying to build a unicorn, buy a unicorn, what's your best? We're limited to, in this example, this budget. We want a vehicle that scores evenly on all and is an adventure motorcycle, so that limits us. There's probably five or six of those that exist, as an example. Uh, for example, they would be Yamaha Tenere 700, KTM Super Adventure R, uh, the BMW 800 GSA, if they have an A, uh, Tiger 800, uh, the Ducati Desert X, those are some examples of uh, medium adventure bikes. Now, why are they medium? Partly because of price, um, which, for example, it would score better on weight. It would be lighter than a heavier, more expensive motorcycle. It's very dynamic. I would like a unicorn who wouldn't. This is why I'm coming to the conclusion that a unicorn would be one of those five bikes or something like it. Because a bike like that, you can load up with all your luggage. I wrote capacity for that. I mean, like on a R1, you can't really carry anything, but bikes with luggage rack systems can carry a bunch of stuff. You can go off road, you can go on the highway, as long as it's a medium adventure bike or higher, cause slower ones like the KLR 650 that I had, adventure, just could not take the highway. It was very quick story. I was going I-70 West. It was so windy. Granted, it was more windy than normal, but I was leaning into the wind and I was still being pushed off the highway and I thought, this is how I die. I was full throttling it, full throttle, 50 miles an hour. That's as fast as I could go. Not good enough, not enough. So you had to spend more to get more points. A bike like that would be good. Now I think I know which bike I like the most of those five, and I'll go ahead and name a name. And it goes back to rule number one, cost. The cheapest of the five that I listed, not counting the KLR 650, would certainly be the T7 is the cheapest of them. And as you see with the distribution of cost versus quality, typically the more you spend, the less you get. For example, the 650 is this excellent value right about here. The cheap bikes are typically good value, but they're not enough for what we need to do. We gotta spend more, we gotta get more points. The T7 is the cheapest, and it's not as good as those, but the difference between cost and performance or quality is worth it. That I think the T7 would be the obvious pick. And again, this is really complicated. It's not as simple as putting it on paper. Uh, it's more tactile too. You gotta ride the thing to find out what you like. So I'm doing this exercise in my head. I've been doing it for a while. And I thought it'd be fun to put it on the board and show, see, that's why I chose that. But in the future, I think it'd be fun to draw more diagrams like this and explore things. Or you can hopefully maybe use this process to help you find what it is you're looking for. So very quickly, for example, you've never owned a motorcycle. What do you do? First thing you do, what's your budget? Where does that put you on the chart? What do you need the bike to do? These are the kind of bikes on the chart. These are adventure bikes. They do the thing that you want it to do. Do you want to, do you want this? It's supposed to be purple, but is that what you want? Is that what's important to you? Well, then that means you're gonna look for these kinds of motorcycles. Then you're gonna load them all up in the video game and you're gonna see how they score and you go, well, they all have your bikes you chose from, they all have 40 points, but this one bike had eight here and eight here, but this one had, this one when I loaded the game, it said six and six, well, that's the best one. You know, so that's what, that's what helps you choose. These should probably be objective. I put, what did I put, looks, appearance? That shouldn't be on there. These are objective measures determined by reality. We can, we can say what is the fastest motorcycle. We can agree based on a book. We can't agree on what is the most attractive. That's dependent on you. So this isn't exactly right, but you get the idea. This is a process you would go through to help you find whatever motorcycle it is you're looking for. This is what my brain is doing. This is why it says if I wanted that motorcycle, it'd probably be a T7. I think it'd be fun to go back and draw my two motorcycles as they are. Both my two bikes more or less look like that on the graph. I got one that's good at this. I got one that's good at this. Two bikes is better than one. That's a whole other video. Did you get learned? I got learned a little bit. Like I said, I just poop this out. I, I might come back and do some more math. Let me know what you think. And thanks for indulging me. Hey, I hope you're all doing well and being good. And we'll see each other later. Bye. It looks like math. You don't know what math is. I mean, it looks like I'm teaching something.